In this video, we're going to look at what to do with that custom weather data you downloaded. So when I downloaded this, it gave it the name 1993640. So I'm going to change that to Portland ME for Maine weather data. And then I'll open that, which can take a few seconds, depending on how Excel is feeling that day. And when it opens, go ahead and take a look at what you have here. You have your station, the name of the station, the date, the amount of precipitation, that is rainfall, snow, snow WD, which is snow on the ground or something, uh, T average, T max, T min, and then this term I added something for the amount of sunlight, but it doesn't look like that is populated. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this column for T sun since it doesn't look like there's anything there which I can do by right-clicking and just selecting Delete. So you notice the dates start off normal, 1-1-2000, and then they switch to hashtags a little ways down. That's just Excel's way of telling you there's more information there than can be displayed. So if you go up here between the columns, you notice the cursor changes. So you can make the column bigger or smaller, but the easiest thing to do is just double-click, and it'll automatically size it to the right size. If you have extra stuff like latitude and longitude, you can go ahead and delete those. So the first thing we're going to do is add some extra columns that we're going to need later. So we have date right now, and date is very specific, but let's go ahead and split that out into year, month, and day. So if we enter equals year, uh, open paren, and then we click on our date in cell C2 here, and then close parentheses, you can see it returns just the year of that date. Similarly, we can do equals month, click on that, and it'll give us the month. Guess what the command for day is? That's right, it is day. So we do that for all three of these. And then we want to copy and paste that formula all the way down to the very bottom of our data. So if we select all three of these and we hover over the bottom right corner, see that little green square there? If we hover right over that, the cursor changes to a black plus sign. And if we double click, it'll automatically go all the way down. And if you want to get to the bottom of your data and you're on a Windows key computer, you can hold down the control key and press down arrow. That'll take you to the very bottom of your data set. And you can see I updated it this term. 2020, January 3rd is the last date we have data for. So what can you do now? So one of the things you might do a lot is you don't want to look at all of your data. You just want to look at part of it. And that's where it can be very helpful to add a filter. So to do that, go up to data and click on the filter button. And that adds these little drop downs on all the column headers. So go to month and you can see right now all the months are checked on. So click to uncheck them all and then let's just look at January. So if I only have January checked and I hit okay, it's gonna show me just January data. And you can kind of tell because you go down here on this row is January 31st, 2000. The very next row is January 1st, 2001. But you can see the row numbers go from 32 to 368. All it did was hide February through December. So all that other data is still there. We just used a filter to hide it temporarily. And we can see that because if we do an average here, well, let's use our, mat, our stats word mean, and let's calculate the average temperature. So you could do the average by clicking and dragging all the way down, but the faster way is just to click on the column if you want to average everything in that column. So if we average everything in column H, which is our maximum daily temperature, we get 56.27354. And then as usual, if you go up to home, you can reduce the number of decimal points down to 56.3. So that seems pretty high for an average temperature in January. And that's because that's not just January. That is including all the data in column H, even the stuff that's hidden. Um, and you can see, because if you go ahead and then you select them all, you basically show every month the average does not change. So filters behave a little weird. Sometimes it'll actually use all the data, and sometimes it'll only show you what's shown. We'll look at that in a future video. But for now, just knowing how to filter to get specific things is really helpful. Now, if you wanted to look at just January by itself, a very easy thing to do is just filter on January, go ahead and click and drag to select all of this, then press Control C as the shortcut key for copy in Windows or Command C on uh, Apple computer. Go down here to add a new sheet and then push Control V to paste. And then I'll change sheet one, 
as soon as this is done, apparently it takes forever because Excel is not the best program. Okay, but finally it's done. I'll go ahead and double click on that tab, I'm gonna Jan data, and then I'll make this wider again. And then all that stuff is still copied, so make sure to press the escape key so that it's not still copied, so you don't accidentally hit something and mess everything up. Now this is just January data. You can see, because if I go down here to January 1st, 2000, January 31st, 2000, the next row is January 1st, 2001, and the rows are sequential, 32 to 33. And you can see there, if I do a mean, and I click, select column H again, now the average is 32.0, essentially. So this is just taking into account my January data. So in general, it's a good strategy is just look at your full data set, do some filtering to get just what you want, copy and paste it into a new tab, and then you can do everything there and still have all your data plus your smaller data set, and you can have everything ready to go. In the next video, we'll look at how to do some more complicated displays where we look at multiple variables together.